Good afternoon, thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. It is the first Thursday of the month, which means we begin today's program in the kitchen. Our main recipe is a harbinger of summer. It's something you can use as the centerpiece of a finger food dinner or as a summer appetizer platter. The children or grandchildren will love it and they can help in preparing everything. Plus, they'll even have room for one of Marco's grand desserts. Here he is, Chef Marco. Hi, I'm Marco Ayala, and I'm here to share another recipe with all of you. We're already in May. The weather is great. It's finally warm outside. Uh, we're all getting back into outside mode, what I call it. Um, and if there's something that we crave during this time of the year, it's all those fresh vegetables, all those fresh things from the garden. Granted that we're not there yet, uh, all those fresh veggies usually come in the summer. However, we can start by, um, you know, getting some of those recipes ready. So thinking about that, I thought that the, for this month, it will be nice to get um, a little something that is a little Italian, something that has fresh things in it, but also that is like pasta and that is fun to eat. And that's how I came up with this recipe for Italian tortellini pesto skewers. And look how colorful those look. Don't they look great? And the best part is that for something that looks so cute, they're really easy to make. So let me tell you how I put this together. First, you're gonna bring six to eight cups of water to a boil in a stock pot. Make sure to add some salt to your water. Next, you're gonna cook your tortellini according to package directions. I chose four cheese tortellini because it's my favorite. You're gonna cook it for about 10 minutes. This should cook the pasta al dente. Remember, you don't want to overcook it because if the pasta is too soft, it will fall apart once you put it through the skewers. Once your pasta is cooked, you're gonna drain it and then you're gonna run it under cold water. This is going to stop the cooking process so your pasta doesn't overcook. Once your pasta is cooked, it's time to get the ingredients ready for your skewers. And here you can get creative. The recipe calls for mozzarella cheese, grape, um, grape tomatoes, black olives. I added some green olives because I personally like green olives. You can also use uh, pepperoni, you can use chicken, sky is the limit. So I took eight ounces fresh mozzarella and cut it into small cubes. If you don't like mozzarella cheese, you can also use cheddar. And now comes the fun part, which is putting the skewers together. And as you can see, I started with my tomato, then a tortellini, mozzarella cheese, another tortellini, black olive, and so on and so forth. And like I said, at this point you can get really creative because you can add pretty much any ingredients that your family likes. Remember to be very careful with your pasta because it's somewhat soft and delicate. So if you push it too hard through the skewer, it can fall apart. And once you run out of ingredients for your skewers or you run out of patience, because I will tell you a little secret, Sometimes you have leftover pasta, which you can actually toss into a bowl and then toss some more other ingredients and then just make a pasta salad. Or if you run out of patience and you decided that there's enough skewers, then you can also make it into a pasta salad. However, once you have your skewers ready, it's time to make the drizzle. And for the drizzle, you're gonna combine one quarter cup Italian dressing and one quarter cup pesto. Stir it together and presto, your drizzle is ready. And this dressing is really perfect for either a salad, for your skewers. You can actually marinate chicken in this and it comes out delicious. 
So I recommend to get creative and try it on other foods. However, in this case, we're gonna drizzle it over our skewers. And if they were looking pretty, now they're really looking amazing. Check that out. And I hope you could smell the pesto and the Italian dressing. It really complements the skewers. And like I said, this can be uh, pretty much a salad. It's like a salad and a stick. And however, if you add chicken or pepperoni or some protein to it, it can actually be more of an entree. So I hope you give this a try. They're a really fun recipe that I think your whole family is going to enjoy. And speaking of enjoying things, the one thing that we all enjoy is desserts. Am I right? So for the dessert, I decided that, again, we're in May. It's getting warm out, out, outside. Let's do something fresh. So I decided that it will be a good idea to do a blueberry lemon heaven dessert. And check this out. Isn't this beautiful? and so easy to make. It's basically a trifle in a nine by 13 pan. So let me tell you how I put this together. First, you're gonna take an angel food cake and you're gonna cut it into cubes. And as all of you know, I love easy recipes. So I bought the angel food cake from a store. However, if you're so inclined, you can make your own. Then in a large bowl, you're gonna combine one package instant lemon pudding, one and a half cups milk, and one cup sour cream. And using a handheld mixer, you're gonna beat it on medium high for two minutes. And that is the hardest part of the recipe because for the rest of it, we're gonna use blueberry pie filling and a whipped topping, which you can find at your local grocery store. So now let me tell you how we assemble this dessert together. Very much like a trifle, you're gonna arrange half of the angel food cake cubes in a layer in a nine by 13 baking dish. Then you're going to drop half of the blueberry pie filling over top of the angel food cake cubes. Then you're going to spoon the lemon pudding over the cake and spread it evenly. Then you're going to create a layer with the rest of the cake. Add eight ounces whipped topping and spread it evenly over the cake. Once your whipped topping is evenly spread, you're going to add the rest of the blueberry pie filling on top and you're going to spread it over the whipped topping and then you're going to bring this into the fridge for two hours which is the hardest part the waiting because it really you really want it to cool and let me tell you i already took a serving out because i really wanted you guys to see it oh my gosh look at that doesn't that look delicious you can see the layers there of pudding uh blueberry pie filling and whipped topping and as you can see, it makes quite a bit of dessert. So you're gonna have enough for your whole family, which then you can keep in the fridge, um, or you can also share it with your friends, with your neighbors. Remember that dessert is one of those uh, joys that we can always pass along to others to brighten their day. And for this recipes, and for many other recipes from across the fence, remember to go to our website. And also remember to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest updates of Across the Fence right on your phone or your computer. And with all this wonderful food, from my kitchen to your kitchen, happy cooking. Mm. Thank you, Marco. We look forward to catching you in the kitchen on the first Thursday of every month. Our next segment also looks ahead to summer with some practical ideas for flower gardens. Garden author Carrie Ann Mendez spoke with Across the Fence about the tips and features in her book, The Ultimate Flower Gardener's Top 10 Lists. This book, I wanted to embrace everything from what are great plants in sun to shade and all different groups of plants, you know, your perennials, annuals, shrubs, uh, small trees. 
But the other half of this book, I wanted to talk about good, organic, sustainable practices for caring for our gardens. You know, the best ways to water your gardens, how to weed your gardens, um, how to keep Bambi and Thumper, you know, deer and rabbit off your plants. Um, so talking about good garden care practices, working with workhorse plants, and also what to do when in the gardens so that your gardens really are in their best shape year round. I mean, talking about what you do in January, even in different things that would be time well, time well spent for. So those would be like a list, uh, ten things exactly. to do in January or whatever. Exactly. Because right, you have seventy lists in here. It looks like yeah, it sounds like a, a lot, but there's a lot of topics there too to cover. Mm -hmm. And it's not just those plants. It's a garden practices, like you say, as well as plants. And right. I know you have some color photos of plants here, yep. but a lot of it's just like like you are, and like you know, let's just get right to the chase here, and let's yeah. you know, here are the things to do, you know, yeah. and just some real good take home tips, easy to read, and um, so. Um, One so of the things have, I have yeah. to just say, because talking about easy to read, I, oh, I get so many comments about my book, especially this one, that it's so humorous. They just chuckle. I mean, they feel like they're reading something that's fun and laughing as they're reading some of my things about the chipmunks or whatever. And I wanted to spin a lot of humor. We want to have nice gardens. We want to enjoy it. We want to make good choices. Well, I think, you know, that's that's part of you and, you know, and just having, and like you say, you've got to have fun gardening yeah. and not get too carried away with it or get, get too uptight about it. And also, you are a gardener. You do a lot of this stuff yourself. You have your gardens pictured. Yeah. And so you're writing from real first-hand experience, which I think is very viable. Too. Yeah. I'm a self-taught gardener. I've learned from great people like yourselves and others. I've come up through the, through the ranks with a lot of dirt under the nails and learned from successes. Well, I think that's one of the failures. best ways. And uh, so thank you so much for sharing all these tips. I look forward to looking through a lot of these and I uh, hope the viewers can too. And, and that's our program for today. Once again, thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.